Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Payroll Country. Welcome to our time and attendance in the new normal webinar. Uh, my name is Kelly, and I'll be your moderator here today. And I'd like to take us through a few housekeeping items before we get started. First of all, all attendees are muted, so you won't be able to speak with us personally this morning. However, we will use a Q&A box towards the end of our session to cover some question and answer time. If you'd like to open that Q&A box now, uh, if you can't see it on your screen, just take your mouse to the lower part of your screen and it will pop up. You can click on it and it will open so that you can enter questions for us. Uh, I will remind you of that when we get to the question and answer session to give you an opportunity to open it then as well. In addition, we are recording this session. So if you are not able to stay with us the entire time, uh, we will be sending out a recording of this session. Of course, we hope that you are able to continue with us through the entire session, um, but we will be sending out a recording by email when we have completed the session. Uh, finally, we will have several polls throughout our webinar this morning to engage you and help you uh, to kind of guide where we're going as we go through our topics for today. So on that note, I would like to launch that first um, one for you so that you can see what that is like. And so on your screen, you should see our first questions here about your payroll country experience. Um, so how would you describe your experience with payroll country? Are you a client and you love it here in payroll country? Are you not a client, but you can't wait to hear more about payroll country? Or are you asking yourself the question, what is payroll country? Second question, what's your current role in your organization? Um, this is a multiple choice question, so you are able to actually answer multiple if more than one applies for you. And then what was the time tracking method you used at your first job? Uh, and we have a couple of fun answers there. Some, uh, uh, was, was it a paper time card? Did you punch the clock with punch cards? Uh, were you punching from a computer, punching from a mobile app? Uh, or were you using a sundial, a Bundy clock, or something else that you may have never heard of? But we'll certainly cover that information for you here today. So I'm just waiting for everyone to go ahead and log their votes. About half of you have done so, so far. And we'll just give a few extra seconds. Uh, one of the things we are here in payroll country is patient. And so we will wait for those answers to come on in. I see that several of you are just jumping on board. So if you've just joined us, please go ahead and um, answer the poll questions that are currently on your screen. And we're just gonna wrap up that polling here. And then we'll take a look at the results. Okay, so uh, now you can see those results on your screen and it does look like we have quite a few about 80% of you are uh, clients here in payroll country and of course that means you love it here. Okay, uh, but we do have a few entries in the other categories uh, current role looks like we have about 40% HR managers, um, but we've got a really nice split between payroll specialists personnel managers and other um, all close to 30% each. Uh, so finally, uh, looking at what was the time tracking method that you used at your first job. Some of us have to think back a little harder than others on that one. We've got over a little bit over 50% on a punch clock with punch cards. Okay, you're in my era, I like to see that. A uh, lot of paper time cards still too. Some people with nothing at all and somebody's using a sundial or a Bundy clock or something else for that matter, okay. So um, without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to our speakers for today. Um, Greg Nasso is our time and attendance uh, product manager here at Complete Payroll. He does have over 10 years of payroll time and attendance and human capital manager management experience. Um, Leanne Ferreira is our client trainer here at Complete Payroll. Some of you, since we've got 80% of you being clients, may have worked with Leanne as she has brought you on board and introduced you to our softwares. She has over 30 years of payroll experience as well as having achieved her APA certified payroll professional. And if I recall correctly, between Greg and Leanne, they have something like four dogs and three cats, and there's probably not anything we can throw at them today that they can't handle. So. On that note, Greg, I'm gonna let you go ahead and take over. Perfect, thanks Kelly. So when I was prepping for this webinar, I, I thought it would be interesting to just give a brief history of time and attendance, kind of where it started and how far it's come 
I do like the answers on our, on our poll question as I use one of those punch clocks with a, with a card that put the stamp on it. And just having worked in time and attendance for over 10 years now, I, I can really see how far the industry and, and systems have come from that, that point in time. So I thought it'd be fun to really kind of go through a brief history of, of what has, um, you know, what, where time and attendance has, has started and where it's gone. And so, you know, being like any person doing some research, I just typed history of timekeeping into my Google browser to see what kind of what popped up. And I got so excited at, at the start because I had this sea of articles that popped up on my screen and I couldn't believe how much information was out there on the history of timekeeping, right? And then I quickly realized that timekeeping for someone in time and attendance means something quite different than maybe the general public. And they, they view timekeeping as you know, the literal tracking of time. And so, you know, with that being said, I thought the information was interesting and I thought it'd be a fun place to start. And it does tie into time and attendance is you can't really track employees time and hours if you can't track time. <laughs> so, um, you know, ancient civilizations, they, they observed astronomical bodies, the sun, the moon, the stars, constellations to really determine dates and seasons. Um, ancient Egypt was one of the first civilizations to utilize like a sundial or a shadow clock to really track time during the day on um, the famous Luxor obelisk. This is, is just a, a very large example of, of a sundial. I thought something that was really interesting and clever. Um, there was such a thing as a water clock that was developed in ancient Greece by Plato and it was used commonly in Rome as well. Um, this essentially was a vat that was full of lead balls and it would slowly fill with water overnight. And as the, the lead balls reached the top of this container with more and more water, they would eventually spill over the top and fall onto a, a copper platter and make a lot of noise, right? So I thought that was interesting and clever and I'd never heard of such a thing before. Um, and that really takes us on to kind of the medieval era, which is where our first mechanical clocks and watches were first developed. Um, medieval monks played a really crucial role in the development of mechanical clocks and, and your clock towers. Um, we find that um, mechanical watches were developed in the late 16th century. Um, during this period, uh, women customarily wore wristwatches with men preferring a pocket watch. Um, and that really continued on until the late 1800s um, when some wars were fought, especially World War I. Commanders in these wars found that the wristwatch was much more practical for synchronizing troop movements. And this really shifted the public perception away from the pocket watch and into the concept of a male wristwatch. Um, now these mechanical clocks and watches would remain prevalent until the development of the quartz clock and watch in the mid 1900s. Uh, the quartz clock is just a very accurate um, a method of timekeeping and it has an incredibly low cost of production. And so those two factors have really um, caused the quartz clock to continue on into modern day time is, is really a, our most prevalent um, method of, of time tracking used today. So after covering a history of time tracking, right, that takes me into a history of time and attendance. And we find that time and attendance systems, the concept in general, first became prevalent during the Industrial Revolution. Um, prior to this time, the majority of your, your workers were kind of in the countryside, they worked on farms, and their wage wasn't necessarily tied to the specific hours that they worked. And even if it was, they just, you know, you only had a couple farm hands per farm and it was easier to kind of keep track of. And as people moved away from the countryside and into cities working in these very large factories, it became crucial to have a system for tracking the hours of all of these employees to make sure that they were paid accurately. And so for a long time, this system was really composed of an actual, a literal person called a time clerk. Um, their job, it was a salary position where they would sit by the door and literally keep track of the employees as they came and they went throughout the day. So, you know, obviously we can all understand how that might not be the most efficient system that probably has a high cost um, just to track the, the time that your employees are working. And so this really led to the development of our first time clock. It was called the Bundy clock. It was developed by the Bundy brothers patented in 1890. And it was really widely distributed by the end of the century. 
The Bundy clock was essentially the first timestamp machine, similar to kind of the method that the majority of our audience used when they first started working. Um, it would be a mechanical machine. So employees would turn a key on the device and then that key turn would trigger the system to record a, a date and timestamp onto a time card. Um, I, one of the things I thought was, was really interesting is that the, the Bundy clock became so prevalent in some countries around the world that in places like the Philippines and Australia, they actually say Bundy in and Bundy out, like we say punch in and punch out. I thought that was really cool and different. I never heard that before. And another side fact, the Bundy Manufacturing Company would eventually merge with two other companies to form Computing Tabulating Recording Company in 1911. And this company goes on to become IBM. So this massive computing company that we know in, in our modern day um, has ties all the way back to the first implementations of a time clock. I thought that was really cool. So this kind of mechanical um, approach to recording date timestamps similar to the Bundy clock would continue on um, through about the 1970s when the first microprocessor driven kind of timestamp clock was developed by Kronos. And then that, that clock would really be similar to kind of what the majority of our audience used when they first started working until the late 20th century where we moved away from kind of a mechanical punch card, time card system into more of like an electronic system where the data would be recorded on digital devices that would feed the, the time and the stamps, the punches into software, really letting the software do the calculations and adding up the hours instead of someone needing to do it by hand. So as we kind of move into modern timekeeping systems, I'm gonna pass it over to Kelly to introduce our next poll. All right, so we are gonna look at your current timekeeping process. So the first question, which of the following best describes your current timekeeping process? Is everything on paper and completed in person? Uh, is it recorded in a spreadsheet or sent via email? Is it a combination of electronic and paper? Uh, is it a standalone software tracking, not integrated with payroll or HR? Or is it a fully integrated timekeeping payroll and HR system? And of course, we have an other option there for you in case you need that, uh, using the sundial again there, okay? Um, and then the next question, how do you feel about your current timekeeping process? I love it just the way it is. I wish I didn't have to do so much manual work. I'd love it if my employees and supervisors could do more or other. So. It looks like we've got about half of our people answering at this point and the answers are continuing to flood in. I know it's going to be a shock to all of you to know that we here at Complete Payroll use a fully integrated timekeeping system integrated with not only payroll but also HR. Um, that should be uh, such a surprise to all of you. <laughs> all right, on that note, let's see what you guys answered here. Greg, here's your results. All right, thanks Kelly. So it does seem like the majority of our audience is utilizing a fully integrated timekeeping payroll HR system, which is great. Um, that's definitely uh, our preference. That's a, a focus of our organization in general as we service our clients. And it's something we'll touch on today. Um, it does look like, again, the majority of our audience um, likes their, uh, would like if their system could do a little bit more um, for their employees and their supervisors, just to maybe have them a little bit more involved and, and take some work off your plate. I know, again, the majority of our audience is uh, HR managers, so I can see how this, you know, definitely hits home for, for you. Um, and so at this point in our presentation today, I thought it just was really important to kind of talk about what makes a modern timekeeping system, like what makes it modern compared to other systems or other approaches that you might take for managing your employees time. And so I think the first thing that really makes something modern is it's going to be an all electronic system. Um, all the time is going to be gathered via punches or employees entering their hours onto a digital time card of some kind. Right. So the data is feeding into software. Um, it is all electronic. You're letting your software really add up the hours um, and make the calculations for you. Um, you know, the next thing is it's, it's going to tie to software, like I mentioned. And so the software is going to be intended to help streamline management. Um, A, not only just of having your supervisors in the system and having them make corrections and manage their employees, um, but ideally it's going to integrate with other products and systems, i.e. like your payroll system or your HR system, 
So the data being entered in one place is really kind of feeding to the other ones. I know we're talking about timekeeping software today, but a modern system might have a scheduling component built into it as well, whether it is just simple schedules so the system knows when employees are supposed to be there and helps you track attendance, whether employees came in late, left early, if they didn't show up, things like that. You know, or if it's a much more advanced scheduling system where your employees work different shifts, it changes from week to week, you need some method for kind of creating those schedules, communicating it to employees, covering shifts, filling voids, things like that. Um, that certainly would be another component of what makes a modern timekeeping system. Um, there might also be uh, mobile apps that are available for your modern timekeeping system and having something available um, on a mobile device that feeds back into the software. And again, all these pieces are integrated and communicating with each other. Having a system that allows for real-time communication between the employees, your supervisors, administrators, these are all components that's gonna make something modern. Um, lastly, a modern system is gonna contain smart devices, right? So whether it's a PC-based time clock or maybe it's a touch screen physical clock or you're using mobile applications to collect punches, um, the system is going to be able to kind of know where the employee is in their particular day and potentially show them the correct types of punches and things they need to report and so that they're not making mistakes and they're, they're taking more work off of your plate. So, you know, this really brings us into timekeeping in the new normal, right? That's the focus of our webinar today. And over the past you know, six, seven months, we have faced Based all sorts of challenges and changes related to COVID-19 and the pandemic, you know, changes in our everyday life, things that affect, you know, how we grocery shop, how we visit with family, how we attend events, how we go to work, right? And, and so that time and attendance is no different, right? Things are rapidly changing and we need to make adjustments in our process as we address COVID-19 and the pandemic and this new normal that we're facing. And so, I mean, at this point, I'm going to pass it back over to Kelly for our next poll. All right. Our next poll is about staff working remotely. And the first question there, due to the pandemic, what percentage of your staff are now working remotely? Is it absolutely no one? Is it less than 50%, greater than 50%, or all the way up to 100%? And then the second question, do you envision employees working remotely on a permanent basis? Some of you may have... Uh, not even thought about that yet. Others have moved into a more permanent uh, plan already. So obviously yes, no, and unsure are our options so that you can enter what is most appropriate for you. All right. And uh, Greg, let me throw those results out to you. Perfect. Thanks, Kelly. So it looks like we're, we're split pretty even here that, you know, at least, you know, less than half of, of the population is working remotely or greater than half. Um, but it looks like that really is, is a pretty large chunk. Um, and then we do have, you know, a smaller percentage of the group where no one's working remotely right now. And then we also have places where everyone's working remotely. So it looks like we have a pretty kind of even split. And I think the next portion of our, our presentation should hit home with pretty much everyone. And I do think it's also interesting that we're split pretty even in terms of whether this might be a permanent change or, or if it's not going to be a permanent change. I know there's still so much uncertainty, uncertainty as it relates to the pandemic. Um, and so our goal today is really just to kind of show you different methods and tools that are available to you to help manage some of these changes and, and just know that they're out there and, and, and help you make educated uh, choices in terms of how you manage time and attendance in this new normal. Um, so there are a variety of methods that are well suited to kind of replace classic methods for employees that might have been punching in and out uh, um, on site using physical clocks. And so at this point, I'm going to pass it over to Leanne to kind of demonstrate some of the methods we have for employees that are working remotely. All right. Thanks, Greg. Um, so yeah, we're going to take a look at how your employees that are now working from home can still um, manage their time. And so um, here is our login. If they are an employee that simply clocks in and clocks out, like Greg mentioned, maybe even using a physical clock, they can just simply put in their credentials and then uh, click on the web clock. I'm gonna go ahead and click into our employee portal view. 
And this is going to show us both the web clock functionality as well as the employee's time cards and some additional features that are available. So here on our dashboard, you can see this is our web clock employees who are you know, just clocking in, clocking out. We have those menus available. Now, some of your employees who are now working from home may have been uh, just turning in paper timesheets. And so this solution provides an electronic time card that works similar to a electronic or to a timesheet that they may have been filling out um, with paper. So here's our grid of our current week. And as an employee who is going to be um, entering my time, I'm just simply going to click an add button. I can enter in hours, you know, a, a time in and a time out, and the system will calculate, you know, the time that I've worked. Or I may just be recording the number of hours I work per day. And so here I'm able to just simply use this field and enter in the number of hours and save and I'm done. We also offer additional fields that your company may specifically need for your reporting needs. And so we can incorporate those into the setup of your time clock as it is very customizable and we do want to get this customized to your company's specific needs. So um, at the bottom of my time card, you're going to see I've got a place for totals and also I can see my current balance for any uh, time off that I may have if this is a benefit that you offer to your employees. Other options that we have here in the employee portal, um, we do have a menu for scheduling. So if we wanted to incorporate that, we can have this area for scheduling for employees. And then as I mentioned, time off is an employee um, is eligible for that benefit. They have an um, area of their employee portal where they can view their balances and easily request time off. So the um, back on the dashboard here, I just wanted to show you there are the, the um, mentioning the App Store and Google Play. So the mobile application that Greg had mentioned is available for both Apple and Android, and we'll be showing you those. Um, it will be showing you an example of the mobile app a little bit later in our presentation. But as you can see, this is a really nice way that employees can continue to manage and track their time while working from home, having everything here at their fingertips via the web. So now I'm just going to pass it back to Greg. Perfect. Thanks, Leanne, for showing us those different methods and how they would work for for our clients or you know, really anyone that might be looking to kind of add these, these remote solutions. So, you know, the next thing that, that we want to talk about is the concept of like a touchless collection method, right? And we, we're starting to hear touchless kind of, you know, across the HR, the HCM um, the space. Is organizations just kind of revisiting how can we, you know, remove the need for employees to kind of, you know, touch shared devices and kind of making employees feel more comfortable and in terms of the workplace and back to our poll, right? But there's definitely a good percentage of our audience where you still have employees that are coming on site. Um, and that might, you know, be a requirement of you know, your industry and, and, and how your, your staff need to record their work. Um, so obviously COVID-19 has kind of brought these discussions to light in terms of, you know, how things can be touchless and we have a couple of different methods that, that, are available and you can consider if you want to move away from kind of that physical time clock that employees all need to kind of touch whenever they want to record a pledge into something that is touchless and might make your staff feel more comfortable. Um, so our kind of premier easiest solution that we're recommending our clients at this point is to utilize um, our location management service um, with our, our timekeeping system that kind of allows employees to punch in and out from a mobile device um, and also incorporate geofencing so that you know that they're punching from places that they're supposed to be punching and they're not clocking in on their way to work or from home and things like that. Um, a couple points I want to make on why this is kind of our preferred recommendation for a touchless solution. Uh, we've studies find that about 90% of people in our country today have a smartphone. And so, you know, over the past couple of years, we have fielded some objections to this type of solution as maybe not all your staff have a smartphone. Um, but again, times are, are really changing. We are finding that the majority of people do have a smart device of some kind. Um, if you're utilizing the mobile app to record punches versus maybe utilizing a computer, 
On the mobile app, you're kind of permanently signed into, similar to like a Facebook or email on a phone. And so we know that some of our clients have employees that do struggle utilizing technology and the concept of entering a username and a password every time they sign in to record punches can be kind of a daunting task for some employees. And so if you utilize the mobile app, you really eliminate that, that, that need altogether as the employees are permanently signed into the phone. Um, you know, lastly, if you're utilizing something like a, a smartphone app for employees to record their punches, um, it is really like a premier state-of-the-art solution. Um, and we think it's important to consider things like that, offering your employees these tools that kind of set you as an organization apart from other places they might have worked in the past. Um, there is a convenience, there is an ease, there is an enjoyment that comes from utilizing this type of method um, to record punches. And I'll just ask you for a moment to kind of envision two different scenarios. In scenario A, maybe you have an employee that you know, they're not late yet, but they are kind of coming in the door and they're cutting it close and they know they need to kind of walk through the door, maybe to the other side of the building to clock in and make sure that they're in on time to get to your physical clock. And this is, might be a stressful experience for your employees. You know, maybe they're rushing in, maybe they're, you know, driving quicker than they necessarily should on the way to the office, right? And it doesn't necessarily lead them to kind of start off their day in the best you know, foot. On the other hand, if you're utilizing a mobile app like this, the employee can literally be walking in the building and pull out their own personal phone um, where they just open the app, they clock in, and now they can walk right to their desk or their workstation. And, and really, you know, there's two separate days and experiences that this employee has. So we think it's important to just consider, you know, what utilizing something like a mobile app and allowing your employees to punch utilizing a geofence solution might look like for you, as it might help you with talent retention and kind of set you apart from your competition. Um, but you know, from a, a high level you know, perspective, utilizing this mobile app, it is touchless in that I'm not gonna share my smartphone with anyone else, right? So I'm not utilizing some device that other people have to touch, um, it's mine. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna pass it over to Leanne so she can kind of walk us through um, how this solution is set up in our system. And as you're doing that, Leanne, just want to let you know that we have a question that's perfect to this. It says, how do you know people are being honest about their time? Well, like they're not punching out when they get home. Right. And so this is the solution that will um, give you that information. So again, we're going to be taking a look at the geofencing. And I'm going to show you how easy it is for you to independently set up and manage your geofences. You do not have to rely on a customer service rep. You won't have to get an IT guy to set up these um, geofences. You're going to be able to manage this as the administrator for your company time and attendance system. So here in my settings menu, I have a, a link right to my um, GPS management. Or I don't. <laughs> So bear with me for just a moment. I appear to have uh, logged into the wrong company. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and get into the company that I need to be logged into. So bear with me for a moment. And so I just wanted to mention that we also have the ability for um, the employees to, or for you as a, a manager to even just track where they are, not necessarily even block if um, that's something that you may be interested in. And so uh, I want to be able to go ahead and show you that too. Oops. All right. So you can see there is a human behind the curtain, no wizard here. <laughs> um, all right, back to my menu. Thanks for playing. Here we go in my <laughs> settings there. Here it is, our geofence management. Um, on this screen, I'm going to see my current fences. So you can see I've got a couple. And then to um, create a new fence, I'm just simply going to click the button. I'm going to uh, give it a name, and then I can enter in a location um, on my map. And so and we'll select our uh, main street office. And here you're going to see um, a, you know, a view of the zone that the employees can clock into. I have a bar here that I can expand or delete. 
or excuse me, decrease the zone um, for the employees to clock in. I can also apply this fence to all employees or just select groups. And we also have an email notification system um, with this product where if an employee does clock out from or clock in outside of the range, the supervisor can be notified that they are outside of that geofence allowing you to take immediate action. I'm going to go ahead and also show you the um, view from um, the employee time card. So you can see what that's going to look like when you are reviewing employees time um, man when you're getting ready to process payroll or just as you're viewing their time managing it from week to week. So here we're going to see our location bubble and um, it will show us the location that the employee has clocked in from. If they are inside the geofence, that bubble will be green. And if they're outside the geofence, that bubble will be red. And so um, the manager can easily see where they are and again, take the appropriate action. So this is going to lead us uh, perfectly into our mobile application that we promised to show. So we're going to go ahead and um, bring that up and show you the uh, interface that the employees will see here in um, on the mobile app. Again, like I mentioned, it is available both on Android and Apple phones. Now, the first thing you may notice is that this looks a lot like the web portal and that is by design folks. This is something that we want to be consistent, making it easy to use. Um, again, we know that we have some folks out there. Um, employees that may be a little bit tech nervous, um, and uh, but this is very similar to that web portal. As you can see, we have our clock in, clock out, um, the time card view that they can um, also edit here. Our scheduling um, screen is available. And then we also have the view of our paid time off. So employees can uh, view and manage and request time off from their mobile app. There's even a calendar option so that they um, will be able to view the time off that they currently have saved. Now, at this time, we wanted to mention about um, time off requests specifically, if you are taking advantage of this benefit, we have an email notification um, system built in for this as well, so that when an employee requests time off, an email will be sent to to their supervisor alerting them that the request has been made. And also um, when a supervisor approves their time off, the employee gets email notification. So this really um, improves communication, making it efficient. Again, in our you know, remote new normal, um, this can be a very helpful to tool for you and for your employees. So I think you can see or saw from our slides that the mobile app really is a simple interface, very similar to the web uh, portal. And um, I always tell my trainees that if their employee can play a game on their phone, they can certainly use the mobile app. All right. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass this back to Greg to continue on. Perfect. Thanks, Leanne. So I'd like to mention at this point, too, that the web punching method that we showed earlier also could be used as a touchless you know, punch collection method. Um, but you know, obviously it would require employees to kind of have their own dedicated PC to be truly touchless. And so if you have a physical clock and you're trying to move away from it, you know, depending on your operation, that might not be the, the most cost effective uh, method for you. So the next kind of option for a potential um, touchless a time collection method is going to be the concept of a biometric facial recognition time clock, right? The technology is definitely there. And so similar to like a biometric fingerprint clock, um, this clock would kind of take a scan of employees faces and kind of map the to topography of the different points on their face. So it can recognize, you know, my face versus your face. In this case, when I want to punch, I'm just going to kind of walk up to the clock and stand in front of it. And then it would scan my face and know that it's me. And then with it being a touchless method, we have smart clocks. So the clock should have the technology as well to scan my face and then kind of know where I am in, in the course of my day with the different punches I need to record. So some vendors might already have this time, type of time clock available. Um, complete payroll is moving forward with our version of this device and we're hoping to roll it out um, in late 2020 and certainly early 2021. And so at this point, I'm going to pass it back to Kelly to kind of poll our audience on our, our next question. 
And our next question is a very simple yes or no answer. Have you considered or implemented a COVID related self screening questionnaire for employees? Uh, we know here in New York State, we have a lot of legalities regarding this. And so many of us have had to explore new avenues for collecting information from our employees. I'll just give you a couple of extra seconds here to uh, enter your responses. And it looks like just about everyone is complete. So let me throw you those results, Greg. Thanks, Kelly. And so it does look like the majority of our audience has had to implement some type of self-screening questionnaire. That's something that we've commonly fielded from our clients um, in response to the pandemic, again, tying back into our new normal. And so, you know, we've kind of heard this from our clients and they've come to us, is there any way that we can possibly incorporate um, this self-screening into their time keeping solution in some way? And so we have been able to kind of create our own solution in our system and so I'm going to pass it over to Leanne and she's going to kind of walk you through what that solution looks like. All right. Thank you, Greg. So here we are back at our login for our employee. And so I'm getting ready to log in for the day. I'm just going to go ahead and um, click on the web clock. When I click on clock in, I am now taken to a screen that is requesting more information. I cannot complete my punch until I have um, reviewed this detail. So here in looking at the question in the last 14 days. Um, I've had contact with a confirmed or suspected uh, COVID-19, or I've had no contact. For our example here, I'm going to go ahead and say that I have had contact with someone um, who has suspected or is suspected of having um, COVID-19. So my other questions um, here, I, I've traveled and to an international or New York State hotspot. I'm going to say no. And then the last question here, um, asking if I've had a fever over 100, hard breathing or cough. I'm going to go ahead and answer no. So once all of these three items have been answered, then I can go ahead and finish my punch. Now, the system does allow the employee to clock in, even if they have answered negatively to any of those questions. And that's because we cannot prevent our employee from clocking in, even if they do answer negatively. Um, but an email will be generated immediately if negative answers to, um, so that the supervisor can address in a timely manner. And there's also tracking and reporting that is available for management to follow up. So the two um, methods that we have here for tracking and reporting are time clock or time card flags and also a custom report that we have built for this. So I'm going to go ahead and just click into um, today's entries and we're going to see um, this alert on my employee. And this is going to say, uh, tell you that the employee may have responded negatively to one of the COVID-19 self-screening questions upon clocking in. Please contact your HR admin for additional information. As you can see, there is no personal detail here. So you are still HIPAA compliant. Your supervisors are not going to know what those answers were. Uh, just that, you know, there was a question that was answered negatively. So the appropriate person can take the appropriate action. So in our reporting, um, we have built a custom report for um, specifically tracking COVID information. And so to run my report, I simply click on it. Um, the parameters were all set as I needed them. I can change them if I needed to run for different timeframes or different employees. Um, but here you can see um, each one of my employees listed, the date, if there's a negative response, and then each one of those um, questions that were asked. And so this report, as you saw, was very quick to run, makes it an efficient tool. Um, I can even sort this report. So I've got everything grouped together and I can um, take that action as needed. So we think that this is a, um, a, a really great solution to this um, you know, issue that has now popped up in our new normal. And um, so this is definitely something that we can add for your timekeeping and um, make this a little bit easier process for this new you know, requirement that we are all faced with. So then I'm going to go ahead and just pass it back to Greg to continue on. Perfect. Thanks, Leanne. And so I'd like to uh, just clarify two other points related to this solution. Um, a, we would love for the system to generate an automatic email notification, and that's something we are working towards with our developers. Um, but at this time, we can't quite do that. 
And so we know this solution gives the supervisors the methods to really review their employees' punches daily in a pretty quick and easy sense, and then kind of get in contact with our HR administrators to run that report and reach out to the employees as they need to. Um, the other key detail is this method does require some type of web punching or utilizing the mobile app um, just to really show those prompts. Some of our physical clocks have a more of a simple interface on them, so it doesn't really have the ability to show a drop down menu. So if you were interested in implementing this, you would need to utilize one of those two punch collection methods. And so at this point, I'm going to pass it back to Kelly um, for our last poll question on our webinar today. All right, and again, this is a simple one. So what was your favorite feature? So what timekeeping feature shared today did you like the most? Was it mobile punching with geofencing? Was it electronic time card submission? Was it web punching from a computer? Was it the COVID self-screening or the potential biometric facial recognition? Or do you love it all and you wanna know how to get it? We wanna see what your feelings are about each of these various different features features that we've shown you here today. Uh, and while you're finishing up that poll, I am going to tell you that we're getting ready for our question and answers. So if you would like to, uh, once you've finished entering your poll, you can put your mouse down near the bottom of the screen and the Q&A box should pop up and you will be able to uh, start entering your questions. And I'm just going to share those results back with Greg. Perfect. Thanks, Kelly. And so it does seem like the majority of our audience is kind of split between mobile punching um, with uh, geofencing and utilizing that COVID self-screening questionnaire. And again, I'd just like to point out that both of those methods can be utilized together. So if you were to add in that mobile punching on the app, then you could also incorporate the self-screening questions. And so hopefully, you know, those two tools, um, you know, help you kind of move forward and face these challenges that we've been addressing. And so, I mean, at this point, I'd really just like to thank you so much for sharing your valuable time with us today. Um, you know, if, if you are interested in implementing any of these solutions, please let us know. Please contact your customer service rep um, or, you know, reach out to us, follow up um, on this webinar, and we can definitely get you in touch with people that can discuss these solutions with you. Let's face it, we definitely have entered a new normal in many ways, and timekeeping is no exception. So as you are beginning to enter those questions in the Q&A box, I just wanted to remind you that our website at completepayroll.com has a wealth of information about time and attendance. Not only do we have the time and attendance complete guide, but under our solutions menu, we have an area specifically devoted to time and attendance and another for automated timekeeping. Of course, the HR Support Center is available to all of our clients there on our website, and we have complete payroll blogs that cover all kinds of areas, including timekeeping. Um, as Greg said, if you want more information, uh, if you are one of our clients, you, all you need to do is contact your CSR and uh, she will help you get connected with someone to answer more questions. Uh, if you would prefer, you can email sales at completepayroll.com or call 1-800-237-5800. So at this time, we're going to take a look and see what kinds of questions we have popping up here. Um, let's see, I have a question that says, can Geofence be set up for more than one location for one employee? Great. Yeah, so um, our, our system allows for <clears throat> unlimited fences. So you can have as many different fences on your account as you want. And then we do have the ability to kind of filter your fences or apply them to specific groups or individual employees if you really want that level of detail. Essentially, you know, Jane Doe, she might be able to work at location A and B. And if she were to punch at location C, it would generate a flag for you that she punched outside of her fences. Where John, you know, he works at B and C, but not A. So we definitely can add that level of detail. But you can have as many fences as you need to incorporate as many different locations. And so if you want to have a fence for every employee's home that might be working remotely and you just want to make sure that they're punching from home and not from, you know, a restaurant or some other place you don't want them working, you definitely can add that detail and that comes at no additional cost. So actually the next question, what if an employee has to report hours to a specific job? For example, we need a breakdown of what jobs were worked on every day because those hours get charged to that job. 
I'll go ahead and take this one. So yeah, we definitely can do that. Um, in the employee time cards, when they're clocking in and out, um, they can either clock in and out to different cost centers. We can set it up as an additional question um, or a clock prompt, as we like to call it, um, for those employees that simply clock in, clock out. We also have a transfer feature where they can transfer to a different department when they are clocking in and clocking out. Um, and then if they are editing their time cards, that is something that they can pull in um, on a new column that, or additional column, excuse me, um, for department or cost center or project, whatever it may be for you. So that's definitely something that we offer and many of our clients utilize to um, take advantage of that detail of reporting. All right, another question. You mentioned scheduling. How does scheduling fit into time and attendance? So um, our, our system does come with kind of a basic module. Um, it lets you set schedules for your employees. This tends to be really applicable if maybe you're in a corporate environment or employees work kind of the same you know, start and stop times on the same days. It doesn't really change that often. And by incorporating scheduling, the system knows the times the employees are supposed to work. And then you can utilize that to add flags to time cards if employees come in late or if they leave early. If you have some type of you know, points or attendance policy where you track kind of how many exceptions they have by adding in the scheduling, um, we can help you manage the tracking of those exceptions and flags and points also is, is how they might expire depending on your policy. Um, and again, lastly, you know, we do have an advanced scheduling system as well, which is really utilized for kind of creating, publishing, communicating shifts to your staff, filling, you know, covering, um, you know, call-ins, no-shows, filling gaps um, in, your, in your coverage. And if you want to learn some more about that system, you know, please stay tuned for, for our scheduling webinar that will be coming up in the coming months. Uh, speaking of an upcoming webinar, there is a question here. Will there be a webinar about setting up New York State PSL, paid sick leave? Uh, that's a fantastic question, and uh, we love to hear your suggestions for webinar topics. So uh, can't say exactly when that might happen, but certainly something we can consider going forward. Uh, another question about will I receive a copy of this webinar, and um, as mentioned earlier, and I did want to remind you, um, these, uh, this webinar is being recorded, and we will be sending that recording out to everyone who registered for the webinar. Uh, coming back to the self-screening, um, I did have a question here. How much a month is it for the self-screening? We're currently doing it by pen and paper, which is adding up quickly. So um, the self-screening solution that we offer is included within our time and attendance package, right? So if you are using our TimeWorks Plus system, then setting up this feature will come at no additional cost um, to your service in any way. You just have to reach out to your customer service rep and they'll get in touch with our implementation team to kind of add this tracking onto your account, right? But the key detail there is you do need to utilize our time and attendance product. So if you're not, um, you know, please follow up with your customer service rep or, you know, or, you know, reach out to one of those resources Kelly shared, and we can definitely get you in touch with the right person to kind of review what those costs might look like and, uh, and give you some more information on the system. Okay, Greg, another question. I don't know, Greg, Leanne, um, do I have to offer electronic timesheets for my employees? So I know we did show those electronic times, timesheets. Leanne, did you want to speak to that? Yeah. Um, and the answer is absolutely not. You don't have to offer that at all. In fact, many of our clients, um, when they uh, have the web punching, the employees will always have access to that portal and they can even use the mobile app even if they don't mobile punch or use you know, GPS. You may not have a use for GPS. Everybody's in the same place. Um, but the employees do not have to have access to editing. They can just clock in, clock out, and the um, the time card view that I showed you earlier would just be missing that option on that page. Employees would be able to view their time cards and there's even a note function so they can leave you a note if they miss a punch or you know just something odd on a particular day. Um, so they will have that functionality that can be very helpful. Um, we even have functionality for employees to electronically approve their time cards. Uh, so maybe they are not you know obviously doing the editing as the question was posed, but um, we can set up 
functionality for them to approve that time and even have a supervisor approve that time. Just some additional features of the um, employee portal. So it sounds like it's a menu of options and uh, each individual client gets to choose what they want to put on their plate. Absolutely. And in fact, I think for all the employees or excuse me, clients that I've trained on this system, the majority of employees do not edit their time cards. Um, they want them to just clock in and clock out. And one other thing we didn't show you, but I think is worth mentioning at this point, is that everything is audited, auditable, if that's a word. Um, we have <laughs> audit tracking um, for punches and changes. So as a supervisor or administrator, you're going to be able to track who clocked in, where, what time, who made a change to that time, who up to that time. And so that really provides you with historical information and some additional security. Nice. I've got a couple of questions back to the geofencing. Greg, maybe if you want to address this, um, can geofence restrict employees from punching outside of the fence? So um, at this time, our, our system can't can't do that. Um, but the, the answer really kind of comes back to um, compliance. Yeah, it's, it's, it? a, it's a compliance thing. Um, you, you can't prevent your employees from you know, trying to punch in and record time for work purposes, right? And so our developers really produce their system to understand this compliance need as that you could really find yourselves into some sticky situations if you really were preventing your employees from punching in and you know, they, they felt that they were doing work activity, right? Um, but you know, with that said, the email notifications that come out from our system, the flags that show up on their time cards, those, those emails come out to supervisors in real time whenever an employee punches outside the fence. And so your supervisors and your administrators are being notified. There's all the detail in terms of what was going on. And so you do have all of the information to kind of understand what's going on and take action, right? And, uh, and we find that it is within your right to kind of add detail into your employee handbook that kind of specifies how you're going to discipline employees if they do abuse this policy as you know commonly this might be a tool that you're adding to make the employees lives easier and you know this is a privilege it's not a right it's something you could take away if there's problems with it speaking of taking away can we force an employee to let us track gps um no you cannot force the employees um, to kind of give up their, their location, right? Um, that's more of a privacy concern. Um, our software vendor, they can't produce an application that's automatically going to track an employee where they are all the time, right? Um, so it's something that the employees do have to kind of turn on when they install the app. They have to sign off on it and buy into it. Um, I'd like to clarify as well that the app is not tracking where the employee is all day long once they're punched in. That would use an incredible amount of, of data and battery power. Um, you can think about how your phone works if you're using it for like Google Maps and directions. Um, our system only tracks where they are at the moment they record a punch. Um, and so then you, know, you can pull that up in the system and kind of see where they were, but it's not intended to really track everywhere they are and what they're doing throughout the day. All right. Um, well, it looks like that is all of the questions that have been uh, sent in to us. I'll just give another moment if anyone else has. An, oh, and as I speak, one pops in. Thank you very much. Uh, is there a report available to run for an employee to see multiple days punch in or out over multiple pay periods? So um, could you read that again? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That was a little bit confusing. Is there a report available to run for an employee? employee to see multiple days punches in and out at, over multiple pay periods. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a, a couple different reports that you can run. I think that my favorite might be like an Excel based time card report that you could filter just for your employees. Um, this is going to essentially dump out all of the data that's on the time card into Excel and you could run that over whatever date range you like so that you can see all of their in and out times their total hours, different categories, different projects, cost centers, um, potentially schedule information as well if you're utilizing that detail in our system. Um, so basically whatever detail you're putting in, you'd be able to dump that out into Excel and then use the various different functions in Excel to sort out what you want. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Again, uh, looking for any additional questions anyone might have as we are rounding out the hour here. 
Um, I do want to point out that, you know, if you're like me, <laughs> the question will hit as soon as we close the window or perhaps if you're more like me when you lay down to go to sleep tonight and you can't fall asleep the questions will pop into your mind and you'll think why didn't I ask that question um, no worries uh, obviously uh, you'll have the recording of the video in case you want to just rewatch it or you can call your customer service representative you can contact us at sales at complete payroll.com you can call 1-800-237-5800 you can contact us at any time and we will be very happy to answer any questions now if it is at you know 2 a.m when you're trying to go to sleep maybe not immediately get a response but certainly we will get back to you and answer whatever questions we can okay so on that note, I would like to thank you for attending with us today and uh, encourage you to reach out and we look forward to working with all of you as time goes by. Thank you very much for your participation today.